Hi, I'm Robert Coleman. I'm a Senior Applications Manager at Texas Instruments. Welcome to Power Tips. Welcome to Power Tip 26. In this Power Tip, we're going to discuss current distribution in high-frequency conductors. This slide depicts the current distribution in, in a conductor. Over on the left side of the slide, you can see the scale. It shows current density as a function of color. The dark blue will be the lowest current density, whereas the red is the highest current density. And you can see over here in this conductor that we model that the current tends toward the surfaces. And it tends toward a depth that is set by the skin depth of the conductor. In copper, uh, the skin depth is simply 7.6 divided by the square root of frequency, where the frequency is in megahertz and the depth is in centimeters. It spreads a little differently in a flat conductor. Again, the, um, the currents tend toward the outer edges of the conductors, but those are just two small areas of conduction on this conductor. And so this conductor might be 10 skin depths wide, but it only has about two skin depths worth of copper being utilized. In transformers, it's a little different. Here we have two conductors, one with current flow out of the uh, foil and one with current flow into the foil. And what you'll see is that these opposing currents tend to pull the currents to the surfaces. And that's very good, rather than having the current contained in just the tips of the wires like we do on a flat conductor in free space, we have spread across the surface of the conductor and we have good utilization of the copper within this conductor. However, the situation gets a little worse as you start adding layers of conductors. In this diagram, we're showing two conductors carrying current out of the foil in the top here. On the bottom, we're showing current flow into the foil. And so as we go through the conductors, we see that the current distribution is different. This outer conductor here on the bottom, it's just like our two opposing current conductors, and this current is drawn to the surface of the conductor. However, that current flow on the surface of this conductor induces an opposing current flow in the adjacent conductor, and that current flow in the adjacent inductor is in the opposite direction. And so the current in this second conductor still has to equal the total current. So if you have opposing current flow on this surface, the current on the other surface will flow in the opposite direction, and its magnitude will actually be larger than the current flow here. And so what happens, as you add more layers, these induced currents get to be larger and larger, and it can severely impact the efficiency of your magnetic structure. Dow published a set of curves that quantifies this degradation in AC resistance in the conductors. On this curve, on the x-axis, he's normalized the layer thickness to the depth of penetration and on the y-axis, he's shown a normalization of the AC resistance of the conductor to its DC resistance. And as you increase the number of layers that you use in your magnetic structure, you can ha see it has a significant impact on the ratio of the AC to DC resistance. For instance, here at one skin depth and one layer, we'll see that the AC and DC resistances are almost equal. However, if we go to six layers, we'll see that the AC to DC resistance has gone up by a factor of six. And that means that you're going to have six times as much AC losses in your magnetic structure as you would expect from the DC resistance value. Well, that wraps it up for this power tip. There are many more power tips, and you can find them if you visit the power management design line you can go to the EE Times and search on Power Tips to find this, or you can click on the link to all articles in the description section of this video. Thanks.